Hi, Jessica Janung here with Active Realty. Today, I'm gonna to pick back up where I left off on my home buyer roadmap series. Today, we're gonna to be doing step seven, the final details and preparing for closing on a home. Let's get to it. So we are on step seven out of eight in the home buying process. You've already found a realtor to help you. You've gotten pre-approved for your loan. You've begun searching for homes. You found one that you loved and you made an offer on it. You successfully negotiated that offer and you opened escrow. Now you're going through the final details and investigation phase of the process. In this phase, you're going to be finalizing your loan. You're going to be reviewing documents and disclosures, and you're going to be discussing the findings from the home inspection. <laughs> Let's begin by talking about the final loan details, assuming you're getting a loan. Right when escrow is open, your lender is going to be ordering the appraisal. Typically, you are going to be paying for that appraisal upfront. Normally, they cost around $500, but I have seen them go as high as even $800. So be prepared to take care of that payment with the lender. The lender and the loan processor are going to be gathering any outstanding necessary documents from you and then submitting the file to underwriting for review. It is very important that you provide the requested documentation to the lender as soon as possible so that you can avoid delays. When a transaction has delays, it is usually uh, because of the lender. The best way to avoid lending delays is to get them the needed paperwork right away. Your lender will be finalizing the loan product that best fits your needs, whether that be a conventional loan, FHA, VA, or other loan products, they will be providing you with a loan estimate and options for locking in your rate. After your file comes back from underwriting approved, your loan documents will then be sent to escrow. Escrow is going to schedule an appointment with you and a notary to sign the loan documents. This normally happens about a week before closing. Also around the time that you are getting together all of the needed documents um, to the lender, you are going to be getting more documents from escrow and title that you're going to be filling out. And as soon as those are complete, you're going to return that package to escrow so that they can process that paperwork as well. Next, you're going to review any seller disclosures. In California, in the purchase contract, the sellers have seven days to give the buyer the seller disclosures. Sellers are required to disclose to buyers anything that they are aware of being wrong with the property and anything that they know of that has ever been wrong with the property. Also, alterations made to the property, including upgrades, should be disclosed. Next, you are going to be reviewing the Natural Hazard Disclosure, otherwise known as the NHD Report. This report will tell you if your property is zoned for certain natural hazard zones, such as high fire risk area, flood zones, earthquake fault lines, liquefaction zone, dam inundation area, things of that nature. You will also be reviewing the preliminary title report and HOA documents if the property has an HOA. Lastly, you are going to be ordering a home inspection and reviewing the results of that inspection. By the way, real quick, your agent is going to be managing this entire process for you. I know this might seem like quite a few steps and that's why it is so important that you have a great buyer's agent on your side. The services of a buyer's agent is almost always completely free to the buyer. The seller pays all of the commissions on both the listing and the buying side. So you definitely wanna um, hire an agent to help you navigate the home buying process. If you want some tips on how to hire a great buyer's agent, check out my video on step number one in this series. I will link it down below. If you are considering moving to our area in the Marietta Temecula Valley, give us a call or shoot us an email. We love to hear from you. We're happy to answer any questions you have about moving to the area. Also, if you would like a copy of the Home Buyer Roadmap and the eight steps that we're discussing here, there is a link down below in the description and it's available for immediate download. Back to the home inspection. After the written report from the inspector is delivered to you, you will review that report with your agent. I am yet to get a home inspection report with zero findings, so anticipate that there are going to be some issues to address. If the issues are small and manageable, you might not ask for the seller to make any repairs at all. If there are some issues that you do want the seller to address, 
you will ask for that on the request for repairs form. If you need more information on some of the findings in the home inspection report, you can order additional inspections, some specialists to come out and take another look at the property. This is the due diligence period for the buyer, and so the buyer pays for all of the fees for the various inspections. The seller's only responsibility is to make the home reasonably available for all of the inspections. At this point, your agent is going to help you negotiate with the seller to make the needed repairs or give you a credit which you can use towards making the repairs after you close on the home. It is very common for sellers to offer credits instead of making the repairs because, quite frankly, it's easier. Then there are no issues about who's performing the work and if they did an acceptable job. The seller, by the way, does not have to do any of the repairs. They could just flat out say no. Technically, they do not even have to respond to the repair request. But normally, there is some middle ground to be had when both parties are being reasonable. After all the necessary due diligence is complete, you've reviewed all the property disclosures, you're satisfied with the condition of the property, and you've settled any repair requests that you have, you are ready for the final details, which are switching over the utilities into your name. I recommend not waiting till the last minute in doing so, because as you probably know, if the utility companies have to come out to the property to turn them off and then come back out to reconnect them, there is often a charge. That wraps up step seven of eight in my buyer roadmap series. Stay tuned for my final step, which is coming up. Thanks for watching. Bye.